Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade six practice problems review on unit four, lesson 12 is on fractional lengths. And as we look at our ruler, we're told one inch is around two and 11 20th centimeters. How many centimeters long is three inches? Show your reasoning. What we can do here, if one inch is two and 11 20th centimeters, three inches is going to be three times whatever the one inch was. So three times two and eleven twentieths. Well, this becomes three times. Now, two is the same thing as 40 over 20 plus the 11 over 20. And so this is going to become three is three over one times the two and eleven twentieths as an improper fraction that is 51 over 20. And looking at this, there's nothing I can really simplify here. And so this 3 times 51 is 153 over 20. Now, that's an awkward answer, right? And so if I use my division skills, 153 on the inside, 20 on the outside, 20 goes into 153 about 7 times. 7 times 20 is 140, and you're left with 13 out of 20. So 153 20ths is the same thing as 7 and 13 20ths centimeters. So, number 2. What fraction of an inch is 1 centimeter? Show your reasoning. Well, we can take our one centimeter, and since one inch is around that, we're going to take one and divide by two and eleven twentieths. Now, we've already found two and eleven twentieths is fifty-one twentieths, so we're really looking at here one divided by fifty-one twentieths, and using the algorithm, we're going to do one, keep, change our division to multiplication, and then we're going to flip or take the reciprocal of 51 twentieths to 20 over 51. Well, one times that is simply 20 over 51. That's a 51. Let's try to rewrite that a little bit so you can actually read it. 20 over 51, I don't know if that's any better, inches. So 20 51sts of an inch is equal to one centimeter. And that was solving question two there. In three, what question can be answered by finding 10 divided by 2 and 11 twentieths? Well, think back of what we just did. We did one divided by 2 and 11 twentieths. And that was what fraction of an inch is one centimeter. And so instead of 1, this turned into 10. So we can then ask ourselves, basically, for 3 here, how many inches, believe it or not, that says inches, lakes, are in not 1 centimeter. That was 1 divided by 2 and 11 twentieths. 10 centimeters is what we're looking for here. Problem two. A zookeeper is six and one-fourth feet tall. A young giraffe in his care is nine and three-eighths feet tall. How many times as tall as the zookeeper is the giraffe? Well, times the zookeeper is as the giraffe, we're going to take for number one here, nine and three-eighths, and we're going to divide that by 6 and 1 fourth. We need to get these as improper fractions now. 9 is the same thing as 72 over 8. 6 as fourths, you can multiply by 4 and get 24 over 4. And so as improper fractions, we have 75 eighths divided by 25 fourths. 
I know I don't want to do a bar diagram for this, so let's uh, keep the first number, change our division to multiplication, and we're going to take the reciprocal or flip here. Now, I would strongly recommend cross-simplifying here. Is there a number I can divide out of both 75 and 25? And sure enough, you can divide 25. So 75 divided by 25 is 3. 25 divided by 25 is 1. Same thing when looking at the 8 and the 4. I can divide a 4 out of both of those. So there's 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And this makes it so much simpler because then I can take 3 times 1 and get 3 and 2 times 1 to get 2. So we get 3 halves which is the same thing as one and a half. So to answer the question, how many times as tall as the zookeeper is the giraffe, really, it's one and a half times. What about number two? What fraction of the giraffe's height is the zookeeper's height? Well, we're dividing this now the other way. So for number two, in number two, it's six and one-fourths divided by nine and three eighths, and we've already found the improper fractions for these. So this is 25 fourths divided by 75 eighths. Well, once again, keep the first number, change the division to multiplication, and flip or take the reciprocal. And once again, we can cross simplify here. Divide by four, you get one and two. Divide by 25, you get 1 and 3. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, so now we get 2 thirds. And so what fraction of the giraffe's height is the zookeeper's height? 2 thirds. Let's move on to question 3. A rectangular bathroom floor is covered with square tiles that are 1 and a half feet by 1 and a half feet. The length of the bathroom floor is 10 and a half feet and the width is six and a half feet. How many tiles does it take to cover the length of the floor? Okay, length, 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 length. Let's use our highlighter here, length, 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 length. What do we know about the length so far? We know the length is 10, length here, see, 10 and a half feet. Length is 10 and a half feet, okay. So what we need to do then is take the 10 and a half feet there and we're dividing it by the one and a half foot tile. It's one and a half by one and a half, so length and width are the same there. Well, let's get these as improper fractions because your fractions must be improper. If we're writing 10 out of two, it's 20 halves plus the one half we have divided by the one, same denominator here, two, is two over two plus the one half. And so we have, for this question, 21 halves divided by 3 halves. And if we keep that first number, 21 halves, change our division to multiplication, and flip, take the reciprocal there, you get 21 halves times 2 thirds. And once again, if we simplify by dividing by 2 there and there, and dividing by 3 here and there, you get 1 and 7. That's a 7. Multiply this out. No, what did I just do? I don't know. Oh, sorry, hit the wrong button. Probably didn't see anything on your screen, but seven times one is seven, one times one is one, and so that means you're going to need seven tiles. Next, we have how many tiles does it take to cover the width of the floor? Width, 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 width. Here's the width, right? Width, width, width. And then width of the floor, six and a half feet, six and a half feet, six and a half feet, okay. So that means in this question, I am taking that six and a half and dividing it by one and a half. Improper fractions now, six is 12 halves. And now we already established as one and a half is three halves, so I'll just bring it from the last question. So we're asking ourselves 13 halves divided by three halves. Once again, we're going to Keep the 13 halves, change our division to multiplication, and flip, take the reciprocal of the second number, it becomes 2 thirds. Is there anything I can simplify here? Well, not as much as in the first question. This is 1 and 1. And so now we end up with 
13 over 3, which is 4 and 1 third. And again, the work on that, if you were to take 13 and divide it by 3, you get 4 whole tiles and 1 third of a tile. And we're not going to round up here because you can actually cut tiles, I suppose. Um, and so we'll just get four and a third tiles here. Question number four, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, recommends a certain amount of nutrient intake per day called the daily value. Food labels usually show percentages of the daily values for several different nutrients, calcium, iron, vitamins, etc. In three-fourths cups of oatmeal, there's one-tenth of the recommended daily value of iron. What fraction of the daily recommended value of iron is in one cup of oatmeal. Sounds familiar. Write a multiplication equation and division equation to represent the question and then answer the question. Show your reasoning. What we're doing here is taking that one-tenth of the recommended value and dividing it by three-fourths to see what it would be for one cup. And so that's going to be one-tenth divided by three-fourths is equal to what? And if you remember from some of our other things, you would take three-fourths times the what equals one-tenth. And now, conveniently enough, we have a really nice way of solving one-tenth divided by three-fourths. We can keep the first number, change the division of multiplication, and flip, take the reciprocal of the second number. Cross-simplify where you can. 10 divided by 2 is 5, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and we're left with now 2 fifteenths. And so you get 2 fifteenths of your recommended value in a full cup of oatmeal. Got to have a lot of cups then, huh? Could ask you how many. Or we could just move on to question 5. What fraction of one half is one third? Draw a tape diagram to represent and answer the question. Use graph paper if needed. Well, I don't have graph paper here, so we're just going to draw a diagram. And we're thinking about halves and thirds. If I split this, say, into six equal parts one, two, three, four, five, there's six equal parts. All right? Here's half of that, right? Now, a third of this is right here. This represents a third of it. And so here is one third. Well, our entire half that we're looking for encompasses this. So we here have seemingly one, two, out of the three that we need. So what fraction of one half is one third? It's two thirds. Noah says there are two and a half groups of four fifths in two. Do you agree with this statement? Draw a tape diagram to show your reasoning. Use graph paper if needed. Well, spoiler alert, I'm gonna say yes, we agree. For the tape diagram. Here's an entire diagram. Let's cut it in half. So then we have one here and another one here, which makes the whole thing two, right? Let's split them into fifths. So there's one. Two, three, four. That one is split into fifths. One, two, three, four, five. That's, you know, fifths, too. They're somewhat equal. Now, two and a half equal groups of four fifths in two. Do you agree? Well, we did, so let's see why. If I color one, two, three, four, here's one group of two fifths. Excuse my sniffles. One, two, three, four. Here's two groups of four fifths. And then lastly, we have one, 
2 out of 4. So we have 2 out of 4 that we need, which is half of what we need for a complete group. So yes, we have two and a half groups here of four-fifths in the number two. That's it for this grade six practice problems review on unit four, lesson 12 on fractional lengths. Good luck.